This is the magazine. My name is George Njukuna. And I am Maureen Fever Muturi. Good. And uh, she says this is one song that she felt God was doing in her life. Mm. Good. Let's talk about your books. Yes. So you have two books. Yes. I want you to hold the first one that came out. This mm-hmm. came out in March 2020. Mm-hmm. Literally two days after we were announced that COVID has come to Kenya. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and you had to supply books. Yes. In that period. Yes. What happened? H- how did it go? What happened was uh, in August of 2019, mm-hmm. God began to give me chapters mm-hmm. because he the books all their invention their creativity it's all about god Mm -hmm. he gives me the chapters he gives me the inspiration for Mm -hmm. it Mm -hmm. so he started giving me individual chapters in august 2019 Mm -hmm. and then they were done in the beginning of 2020 Mm -hmm. so the editing and the publishing of it Mm -hmm. and when it came out covid had just been announced i in fact i had organized a book launch party Mm -hmm. that i had to cancel because of covid yeah and i stood at the house and asked god you gave me a book and you made sure it came out just after covid Mm. then why would you do that Mm -hmm. and what he told me has always stuck with me he Mm. told me i call you the beacon of hope Mm -hmm. and this is the time that people need hope Mm. the most Mm. And so I rested and I told him he will show me how to distribute the books Mm. because it would have been easier when people are physically meeting. meeting. Yeah. But then I had to, you know, come up to innovative ways. Yeah. He's not limited by either physical or online. Yeah. And and yes, so I my heart rested. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So you've heard me talk about people in Belgium, people in Germany, people in the United States. How can I get how can they get a hold of it? Is it on Amazon? It's not yet on Amazon. It's okay. something I'm working on. Okay. I have the soft copy though. Mm-hmm. So I want to see how to put it on Kindle mm-hmm. and Amazon. Okay. Yes. Good stuff. Mm. So what is redefining refining defining fire? Refining Defining Fire was the title that encapsulated what I had been going through Mm -hmm. from 2012. Okay. It was such a fire in my health that turned my life around. Mm -hmm. But then it became the fire that refined me as a person, Mm -hmm. refined my character, refined what I thought life is. Mm -hmm. And... In the process, there was how I thought my life would go. Mm -hmm. And then there was the way my life was going. And it was hard Mm -hmm. to sort of reconcile the two versions. Mm -hmm. But then because of my conversations with God along the way, Mm -hmm. I chose the fire to define me. Mm -hmm. Other things had defined me up until that point. Mm -hmm. But then I chose that if this fire really was has reached my doorstep mm-hmm. then i'm going to let it refine me mm-hmm. and one of the verses that really come to life or really came to life mm-hmm. was malachi 3 3 mm-hmm. and he said he sits as a refiner mm-hmm. of silver and gold mm-hmm. and it's the priests that are going through that mm-hmm. It wasn't just anybody. Mm -hmm. It was the priest. And he sits as a refiner of gold and silver. Mm. And it also says in the Bible in James that gold, yes, it's precious. Mm -hmm. But then our characters are more. Mm. And therefore, if all the impurities are gotten off the gold Mm -hmm. during the fire, then I want all the impurities off of me. And there's this story that, you know, some ladies went went to a a goldsmith Mm -hmm. and said, okay, so what's the process? And they watched him actually do the molding and everything. Mm -hmm. And one woman asked, so how will you know that it's time to get the gold Mm -hmm. out of the fire? Mm -hmm. And how will you know that it's time? And he said, when I look at it and the impression, and it reflects me. Mm. (sighs) 
a friend of us uh, a friend of ours um common to us mm. once gave an example of how grips are done mm-hmm. and he said um wine is known by the guy who crushes it mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah and they don't crush it with their hands yes. they crush it with their legs Leg. and that's how people know this wine is from Sheila or mm. this wine is from Maureen or mm. this wine is from George. Mm. Um, it might be from the same farm, the grapes, but mm-hmm. how they were pressed mm. is from the main guy. Yeah. So in your case, it was God. Yes, it was. Mm. And it was hard. It was really hard to first reconcile my mind to this is what I'm going through. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't seem like it's going because mm. the first first years I had hope. I'm like, okay, maybe along the way, along the years, it mm. will disappear mm. on its own. Mm. Well, the years went one after another. And they're still here. And we're still <laughs> here. So what I did is I called God to a meeting mm. and I told him, okay, this thing doesn't look like it's going anytime soon. Mm. But I want you to promise me that you will not waste this pain. Mm. It was a covenant that we made mm. between God and I. Mm. I don't want you to waste this pain. If I'm going to go through this pain, mm. then let it benefit someone else. Mm-hmm. After that, I got so much peace because I began seeing I began seeing how God was using the pain I was going through mm-hmm. to encourage others, mm-hmm. to get people off the you know, that when the someone is hopeless and they're just about to give up mm-hmm. and then they hear about me or they hear about my story mm-hmm. and somehow God rescues them mm-hmm. from mm-hmm. that cliff. Mm-hmm. And that's how my purpose came to be. Mm-hmm. It came from pain. Mm-hmm. I watched God turn the pain I was going through okay. and turned it into purpose. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, good. Let's talk about the second one. If you can lift it up to the camera. Yes. Good. This is my second book. The Remolding Furnace of Affliction. Of Affliction. Yes. Yeah. This book was born out of so much pain. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I get shivers Mm -hmm. about it. (laughs) Why? I like it more. I I saw. I saw that you have more interest in this one. I did. Uh. This book was born after four months Mm -hmm. of not being able to speak and what i mean is one of the diagnoses that i got that started developing in 2021 Mm -hmm. but just was really properly diagnosed last year Mm -hmm. but the way it came is i started having pain along my jaw and my cheek Mm -hmm. that is on the left side left yes on the left side yeah and it would come as an irritation, as a burning, as that shock we were talking about earlier. Mm-hmm. And it would come around here. And when it did, I couldn't speak. Mm-hmm. It was too painful to speak. Mm-hmm. And then it developed to my tongue, to my throat. So I want you to imagine a muscle pull. People who've run, swim, mm. and then just catches your muscle like this and yeah. then refuses to let go. Mm. So imagine such a muscle pull, but inside your mouth. Wow. And it would come in waves. Mm-hmm. So it's wavy. It can be in waves for six hours when it got really bad. Mm-hmm. And I was admitted in hospital for like three weeks. They couldn't tell me what was going on, mm-hmm. but it just developed really fast. Mm-hmm. And so I fell apart. Mm-hmm. 2021 was a year I totally fell apart. Mm -hmm. In a way, I have not done in all the other years. Like this was special pain Mm -hmm. that brought me to the brink almost of death because Mm -hmm. I'm a very expressive person. My life revolves around speaking. Mm -hmm. So coaching, inspirational talks, I'm a Toastmaster, a public international speaking club. Mm -hmm. And all those things had to drop because I couldn't speak. I was in a program a coaching program where i was needed to coach for me to be given marks Mm -hmm. i couldn't do that so i'm lacking expression 
and so all the things i felt the anger the hurt the bitterness they were inside of me because i couldn't express them with my mouth mm-hmm. then i also process with as i'm speaking to someone i'm realizing some things mm-hmm. i didn't have that mm-hmm. so after all that a friend of mine came i was i, i would cry a lot but i couldn't sob because if i did then my the point was my vocal cords couldn't vibrate mm. if they did mm-hmm. i'd be in so much pain so my mode of communication was text messages mm-hmm. i stopped having calls mm-hmm. i would write on notepads and then you know when they get over i just use my phone and using symbols i want that one no mm. that one yes <laughs> and i couldn't tell what was going on the doctors had given up on me to be honest mm. And then a friend of mine came and asked me, "So, have you started writing the book of the season?" Mm. I didn't. Have you talked f- about it? No, I I didn't even have plans of writing a book mm. because I was in my own stupor of pain. Mm. And what happened was, I just I sort of shrugged it. Mm-hmm. And then later, when I'm having a conversation with God, and He asks me, "Did you hear what Arisa said?" I'm like, "What?" <laughs> because my conversations with him at that point were it was thick my mm. conversation with him had gone to a very dark South. point yeah and he said have you started writing the book of the season so right now because i'm i'm an author and i have so many books inside of me mm-hmm. i already know the titles of the next three books that i'm going to write okay so that's interesting i was I knew the book I wanted to write. Mm-hmm. But God asked the book of the season. Oh, I was like, okay, so what do you want us to write? Because it wasn't about me. He mm. wanted to give me chapters. So I started writing mm. and it really helped me mm. to just get it all out there. Mm-hmm. But if there's something this book has taught me is the power of vulnerability. Mm. I used to be the person who wanted to have a picture perfect <laughs> i used to feel like if i broke down i'd be like a porcelain doll which would break in a thousand pieces mm-hmm. and then we can't come back together <laughs> i used to have a very fake smile people would ask me are you okay i'm like yes i'm fine and then i just close the door and cry my eyes out because i was in a lot of pain mm. and and then that time i just accepted i let go and i fell apart mm. And I listened to Casting Crowns, mm-hmm. Just Be Held. Mm-hmm. I stopped holding on and I told God, you know, you got to hold me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I'm tired of holding on to you. You, you have to hold me. Mm-hmm. So that's the bath of the book. Mm-hmm. It's about the power of vulnerability. It's about accepting that there are times we need to fall apart mm-hmm. for us to come back together. Mm-hmm. What he sh- he showed me was the uh, certain things that I had held on to to define my identity that he needed to remove s- just so that I can hold on to the things that really matter. Mm. So my identity was redefined through this book. Mm-hmm. And I got to know really who I am even without me speaking because the problem was he asked me so are you less now that you're not speaking mm. are you less of my child are you less of a <laughs> daughter because you're not speaking because what you're telling me is you don't know who you are because you can't speak so that's a difficult question mm-hmm. i got i fell apart then god showed me my faulty structures mm-hmm. we dealt with them and then now we built back up on a stronger foundation mm. and that's what that book has taught me Wow, yeah. it's it's a very good book. I I love it. Mm. And um she's working on it to come out on um uh, the different uh platforms. So stay tuned and uh, you'll get to hear that. I want you to give me your last word of encouragement of someone who's gone through what you've been through. You told me you have a group for one of the diseases you got. Mm. Uh what what is the benefit? What benefits do they get to enjoy in that space? Uh because I'm seeing you really doing a lot of your purpose. How can people get in touch with you? Okay. Yeah. 
so for someone who is about to lose hope or they're just at the brink of death or you just think that this life is not worth it anymore i would tell you that god has a purpose for you i would tell you that he's right there with you it looks as if he's not there but he is and the thing i would challenge you is dare to hope again mm. dare to put in your mind the possibility that actually this what i'm going through is just a season mm-hmm. and it will get better mm-hmm. god can reach you in whatever mountain in whatever valley in whatever hill mm-hmm. god can reach you right there mm. just hold on and when you can't let him hold you Mm. Uh, you can get in touch with me through my email um, f-a-v-o-r favor more m-o mm-hmm. at be more with more dot o-r-g be more with more yes okay. that's my brand mm-hmm. favor more at be more with be more <laughs> be more with more mm-hmm. dot o-r-g mm-hmm. Or um, you can find my Facebook, Maureen Favor Muturi, mm. or my Instagram, More Favored One. Mm. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming and speaking to us. And where well, you have stories. I'm sure you've just given us snippets. You have so much you can. <laughs> it's like the iceberg is just on top, and then there are so many things that are beyond. Yeah. 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 Mm. So catch her on those uh, social media handles we're also going to put them up on our social media page and also on youtube when this video comes out i want to leave you with casting crowns with the song just be held the song was released in 2014 and uh, the album is called thrive see you next week same time same place may the lord bless you and keep you may his face shine upon you and be gracious to you May he bless you coming in and you're going out. Mm -hmm. May he be with you each and every day. And may you discover your purpose. God bless you and bye-bye.